For the last 10 or 15 years, China has been pretty slow, but we recently, uh, during COVID, and now we see a trend happening, we're selling a lot more blue and white, with a favorite being what they call flow blue, which is a technique of actually, the blue actually, they couldn't contain the dye, so when it was created and they put it, it actually bled out into the porcelain. So anyway, this is English flow blue. This is turn of the century, right before the turn of the century. And anyway, it's it just sits, it's such a beautiful color, and you can mix this blue and white with anything. I particularly love the pitcher and bowl that I got on the East Coast. It's so hard to find a pitcher and bowl set that's complete because more often than not, one piece was broken or the other. And I've just kind of mixed American Brilliant Cut Glass and Waterford in here on this table as well. But isn't the color beautiful? And look at the, here's some historical pieces that I've, I've added in. We have several other cabinets full of flow blue. We love flow blue here. Beautiful. Then over here we have, we have mercury glass, but instead of it being silver, it's gold, which I love this. It's, it's really beautiful to use as a decorative thing. This type of glass is called goofus glass. It was named after the person who made it. And actually, it's clear glass and then was painted on the back, what you would call re reverse painted. It was painted on the back, all the different colors, and then they would do one gold over the top of it. So anyway, you get these wonderful colors. And this is carnival glass. And actually, it gets its name from many times carnival glass was used at carnivals for prizes. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is really beautiful. Do you see the water lilies and the grapes and the pattern in this piece? And what they do is this glass, you can see the base of it was a soft peachy color. And they shot it with acid. I, I don't know exactly their chemical balance, but they shot it with acid and it made a rainbow of colors in it and they called it Poor Man's Tiffany. So that's beautiful. Right over here we have Civil War gowns. And if you'll notice that unusual color combinations, we think of an older dress is all being black and white because that's what we see in photography. They weren't using color at that time. But this first gown, look at the two different, completely different plaids that they use to actually create the dress. And I just love the one behind it. That is the green and brown plaid. And it's actually, uh, it's all, it's all, uh, decorated with a tomato red silk ribbon. Kind of a wild combination, but mm -hmm. striking just the same. And then the, uh, the one in the center? This is the, that one, that's the one that's the tomato red. Uh, with the to beautiful. The plaid. These are three, plaids was, was really big in the 1860s plaid fabrics were. Yeah. And they use them with a variety of designs. If you do a close up on this one that is the green and black plaid, you will notice the designs on the sleeves, the lower sleeve. Do you see the, the black and green trim? Mm -hmm. Not things, not always colors that we would uh, perceive as going together today. Mm -hmm. And in the back you have just a simple this was a day dress of wool. And anyway, it's in the best condition of all of them. It has jet buttons, kind of a gray plum colored wool. We actually sell to collectors and museums, and we do sell to the movie industry. Sometimes for research, they'll buy damaged pieces from me to create patterns from Sometimes if a gown is sturdy enough, they'll actually use it in a movie. We sell a lot of more modern clothing to the movie industry. And aren't you working on uh, a movie right now? 
Well, we are working on several movies right now, so, and getting ready for more in the new season. We, what the the costumers do, or the people that are searching for them, the de costume designers, they actually will send me a grid, which will have sizes on it. It will have color schemes. Mm -hmm. It will tell me winter, spring, summer, or fall, mm -hmm. so I know what shape it is, whether it's formal, whether it's wealthy people, whether it's farmers, whether mm -hmm. it's poor. Uh, sometimes they want garments that have stains on them because of, of the, um, the movie that they're making. And, you know, people didn't have the cleaning processes we have today. And people wore things longer than we do today. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, they want it to be realistic. So I can oftentimes sell um, things that are damaged that I would not normally sell simply because they can utilize them in a scene in a movie. That is awesome. And it's actually cheaper for them to buy an antique piece than to have one created mm. if they do it historically accurate. Okay. So, because it's quite, there's quite a lot of construction that goes into these gowns. There are stays inside built in, um, what they call Peter Shams that hold it to your waist, to your figure. There's all kinds of inner structures that are not utilized in today's society in our clothing.